Join Kids Hat family. Tia and Tofu are going on a school trip while traveling in the bus. I am so excited, Tia. This is my first school camp. It'll be so much fun. Tofu, I know you are excited, but you should remember what parents told us. We have to be safe and careful throughout. Tia, I am a big boy, and this is my first adventure. I'll be cautious throughout. I promise. I am so happy. We are going together. La 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 la. It's a camp, Tofu, so I don't want you wandering around alone at all. We'll have lots of fun, but we'll stick together and be like a team. Like Batman and Robin, like Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel? I haven't seen that movie. It's not a movie, little one. It's a story of two siblings, just like us. I think this is the best time for me to tell you this story. So sit tight. Hansel and Gretel. Once, a poor woodcutter had a son and a daughter named Hansel and Gretel. One day, they get an evil stepmother. One night, the stepmother tells the woodcutter. The kids eat too much. We'll be starving soon. So let's leave the children in the forest and get rid of them. What are you saying? No. But the wife was very persistent, and she kept talking until he was convinced. Hansel overhears their conversation. So that night, Hansel goes out. And collects shiny white stones. We'll find our way back home. Stop crying, Gretel. Hansel. Tomorrow we are going to die. What do we do? Don't worry, we will survive. Good night, Gretel. Hansel hides the stones and sleeps. The next morning, the stepmother takes the kids to the forest. Hansel keeps dropping stones on the ground, thinking, "We can follow these stones home." Children, wait by this big tree. Just sit quietly here, and I'll be back to get you. But she never comes back to get them. Let's wait for nightfall, Gretel. I dropped a trail of white stones all the way here, so with the moonlight shining on them, we could get back home. I am so scared. <laughs> So at night, Hansel and Gretel follow the shiny stones out of the forest.
The stepmother was secretly angry. A few days later, the stepmother again tricks the children. Let's go have a picnic in the forest. Here, take this bread to eat later. We'll go in the morning. This time, the stepmother locked their room at night and so Hansel couldn't pick up any shiny stones. Next morning, on their way to the forest, Hansel crumbled his bread and left a trail of crumbs instead. Deep in the forest. This looks like a good spot. You both can take a nap here while I go and cut some wood. Hansel and Gretel knew she wouldn't come back again. They slept. and waited for nightfall again. When they woke up, the birds and wild animals had eaten up all the crumbs. Now we will never find our way home. I am so upset for us, Gretel. Hansel, don't lose hope. Let's walk and maybe we find our home. After walking the entire day, they find a small house. Look there! A cookie house! Wow! Oh! The house is made of chocolate with a roof of cake and sugar windows. Come! Come! The hungry children didn't even stop to think. I want a big piece of the cake roof. Yum! Suddenly, they hear a voice. Children, come inside. You seem hungry. I'll make you yummy food right now. The lady was an evil witch. The kids go in the house with her. It's a trap. <laughs> I like to eat kids. I made this house to lure you in. Now I'll fatten the boy up and make a tasty treat for myself. Her eyes were red. She had terrible eyesight, but a good sense of smell. She locks Hansel in a cellar. She makes Gretel do all the housework, all the chores. Hansel and Gretel cried and begged, but she had no mercy on them. Come on, girl. Cook something delicious for your brother. You should be fat enough to be cooked by the end of this month.
A week passed. Hansel ate delicious food. While Gretel was always hungry. Every morning, the old witch went to Hansel's cellar and shouted, Show me your fingers, boy. Let me check how much fatter you've gotten. But Hansel would always stick out a little bone for her to feel because the witch couldn't see very well. She was furious that Hansel was staying so thin. One day, she lost her patience and shouted at Gretel, I don't care anymore. I'll cook thin Hansel today and eat him anyhow. And start the oven. Gretel had no choice and she started doing what the evil witch told her. Now get in and see if the water is boiling enough. How can I get inside the oven? Please show me so that I can check the water. Stupid girl. What is wrong with you? It's so easy. You just need to step here and... Ah! Gretel cleverly pushed the old woman in the oven and shut the door. The vicious witch burned to a crisp. Gretel rushed to the cellar and set Hansel free. Hansel, my dear brother, the witch is dead. Now let's run out of here and find our home. How happy they were. While running out of the house, they saw wooden chests all over in the witch's room. They were filled with gems and gold. The children filled their pockets with as many gems as possible and left the house. Hansel and Gretel walked for a few hours when they got to a bridge that they knew well and was close to their house. Look! Father! Father! Hansel and Gretel could finally see their father at the porch looking miserable because his wife had died. My dearest children, I'm so happy you both are alive. I am sorry for letting you go. The three hugged and precious gems started to fall out of Gretel's pockets. Both the children emptied their pockets in their father's lap. They told their father about the evil witch and how they got her treasure. Oh my God, I am happy my kids came back safe. I will never leave you alone now. Finally, they could have a carefree life and lived together happily ever after. Ooh, witches are scary. We are about to reach the forest camp very soon. Don't leave my hand when we go hiking in the forest. 
I want us to be like Hansel and Gretel. I promise not to go anywhere alone. Does this forest have a cookie house or a witch, Tia? Tofu, it's just a story. Hansel and Gretel shared an adventure like a team. Don't worry about any witch. It's just a camp. I hope we find a cookie house like Hansel and Gretel. Cookie house, yum! That sounds wow! I am hungry now. Give me the chocolates from the bag, Tia, please. One again, Tia! Wow, Tofu! You've really become good at this game! Do you want to play one more round with me? The winner gets the loser's share of Mom's special pie! Mom? Tofu, look at the time! We've not completed any of our chores! Oh, don't worry about it, Tia. It's a Sunday. We'll just tell Mom that we forgot. But we remember now. We should do it now. Hmm. Do we have to? Mom won't know. Tofu, are you suggesting that we should lie to Mom? And who will lie to her? That's the worst idea you've ever had, Tofu. And you're talking like the little mouse. Uh, the little who? Belling the cat. That's a story that I want to tell you in this context. Once upon a time, the many mice that lived in his store troubled a grocer. These mice are spoiling everything. Today they pierced holes in the grain bags. Oh dear, what should we do? I don't know. If the villagers find out, they will stop coming to the store and buying things from me. Oh no! What will we do then? Our business will be disrupted entirely. I agree. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't you get a cat for the store? A good strong cat will eat the mice away quickly. And new mice will be afraid to enter the store out of her fear. Hmm, that's a brilliant idea. I will get one first thing tomorrow. The next morning the grocer went and got a big strong cat for his store. Just as his wife had said, she pounced at the first sight of mice. The mice were taken by surprise. Our brothers have been attacked and eaten up by this cat that the grocer has brought. We all should be careful from now on. As the days passed, The movement of the mice became restricted. They always lived in fear of the cat and were unable to get food and supplies for their families from the store. 
if any of them ventured out the cat ate them this distressed the mice very much they made many plans to avoid and escape the cat but failed miserably we are losing out our brothers and sisters to this cat something must be done i have a simple plan but i am sure it will be successful we just have to put a bell around the cat's neck every time the cat will move we will hear the bell ring first this will give us enough time to escape her that's a very good idea good thinking brother we should arrange a bell immediately yes i agree this is a very good plan but i have just one question who will bell the cat Suddenly there fell a hush over the excited mice because none of them had the answer to the question none had the courage to risk his own life to bell the cat and so it remained that the cat was never belled so you see tofu it is one thing to just give out ideas and another to actually go ahead and do as you've said yes dear i am ashamed of what i suggested i said it without considering whether it was right or wrong and possible or impossible come let's go and finish off the chores i am glad you understood that tofu Now let's start with putting away these games. Dia, you recite so many stories to me that are full of morals, but you have never recited your favorite story to me. Which one is it? <laughs> Tofu, that's true. I haven't yet recited my favorite story to you. Would you want to listen to one of my favorite story? Yeah. Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there lived a widow with her only son named Jack. Their times were really hard. and they were living in poverty for long jack was too young to work and earn money all their house furniture and other belongings were sold off to carry on with their basic daily needs until at last they were left with a cow who used to give milk every day and that they used to sell off in the market to buy bread One day the poor old cow didn't give any milk. That's when Jack suggested his mother. I think we should sell off this cow and get a good return in bargain. So Jack left to sell off the cow in the market. On the way he met a butcher. Oh, where are you going, Jack? I'm going to the market to sell off this cow for a good bargain. Oh, why take the trouble to go that far? I have a very good deal for you. He took out five strange-looking beans from his pocket and handed them to Jack. Jack looked little hazed as to what kind of good bargain it is. Oh my god, they are so beautiful. What do you call these? Beans. magical beans if you plant them overnight by the next morning they will grow up and reach the sky wow mother would be so happy to see them thank you mr butcher 
And off went Jack happily to his mother and showed her the magical beans. But to his disappointment, she only got angry at him and shouted, "Off you go to bed right away." She threw the beans outside the kitchen window and into the backyard and went off to her bed crying and weeping. The next morning, when Jack woke up, he saw outside his window, and to his surprise, he saw a great beanstalk reaching up to the sky. Oh my God! This beanstalk is so huge. I need to climb this up to see where it leads to. He climbed up and up and up till his home looked a mere spot on the ground. At last, the stalk ended, and Jack found himself in a completely different place. But suddenly, a beautiful lady appeared and said, "Hello, Jack. You don't know me, but I know you and everything about you. The castle you see there belongs to a giant who stole all your father's money and killed him." Your mother had kept the secret from you to protect you. He owes you, Jack. The lady disappeared in thin air. Jack kept standing there and thinking. He surely owes me and my family. Far away, where the road ended. He could see a huge castle. He went up to the castle and knocked on the huge door. A giant woman opened the door. She looked scary and howled at Jack. "What do you want?" "Uh, if you please, ma'am, would you kindly give me some breakfast?" I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. The giant woman, though looked cruel and ugly, had a kind heart and offered Jack a huge plate of English breakfast, but warned him, "You must finish quickly before my giant husband comes back and eats you." Then suddenly there was a huge knock on the door. and the wife picked up jack and hid him in a huge empty kettle as the door opened the giant entered and roared fee fee fo fum i smell the blood of an english man be he alive or be he dead i'll grind his bones to make my bread Nonsense! You're mistaken. It's the ox hide you smell. So he sat down at the table and ate the ox that his wife had served him as breakfast. After he finished, he asked his wife, "Get me my money bags." He started counting his money, but he was so sleepy that he slept on the table. The whole room was roaring with his snore. Jack, taking an opportunity of this time, got out of the kettle, picked up the money bags and ran towards the door. Before the giant woke up, he climbed down the beanstalk and to his cottage and did not look back even once. He took a sigh of relief and ran to his mother. Mother, look what I got. We are rich now. The mother and the son lived quite comfortably. Till one afternoon when his mother was away, he decided to go up to the giant's castle and see what was happening there. So he climbed up the beanstalk and reached the castle. There standing at the door he saw the giant's wife again but she didn't recognize him because he was dressed impeccably this time Uh if you please ma'am he said 
Will you give me some breakfast? Run away, you little boy. Last time a boy came, he stole my husband's money bags. But since she was kind-hearted, she offered Jack breakfast. At that very moment, the giant knocked on the door and quickly she hid Jack in the oven. The giant entered and roared. Fee, fee, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an English man. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. But the giant's wife once again assured him that he is mistaken and offered him his huge breakfast to eat. After eating his food, he asked his wife, Get me my golden hen. The wife got the hen and the giant roared in his voice. Lay! That very moment, the hen laid a golden egg and Jack was left amazed with what he saw. No sooner he saw the giant slipping into his deep sleep and once again he came out of the oven, picked up the hen and ran for the door. In the meanwhile, the hen began to cackle. The voice made the giant move a little but he kept sleeping. Jack climbed down the stalk and went straight to his mother and gave her the golden hen. The mother and the boy were so rich that they had money greater than even what they could spend. One day he was sitting idle. The thought of the beanstalk crossed his mind again and he decided to climb it. No sooner he was at the castle, but this time he decided not to be seen and climbed the kitchen wall of the castle and hid himself in the oven. In came the giant roaring louder than ever. Fee fee fo fum! I smell the blood of an Englishman. Alive! Grind his bones to make my bread. But the giantess was quite sure that she had seen no little boy that morning. And after grumbling a great deal, the giant sat down for breakfast. As soon as he got over with his breakfast, he called out to his wife. Bring me my harp. Sing, ordered the giant. Soon the harp started singing the most beautiful sounds ever heard and no sooner the giant fell off into his deep sleep. Jack, who was waiting for this moment, got out of the oven and climbed the table to grab the harp. But as soon as he started running off with it, the harp started shouting. Master! Master! The giant woke up just in time to catch the sight of Jack running out of the kitchen door. With a fearful roar, he saw Jack running with the harp and dashed after him. Little Jack ran as fast as he could while holding the harp tightly in his hands. The giant, taking terribly long strides, gained on Jack and he would have been caught if Giant had not slipped over a boulder. Before he could pick himself up, Jack began to climb down the beanstalk and when the Giant arrived at the edge, he was nearly halfway to the cottage. The Giant began to climb down too, but as soon as Jack saw him coming, he called out, Mother, bring an axe! The widow hurried out with the chopper. Jack had no sooner reached the ground than he cut the beanstalk right in two. Down came the giant with a terrible crash. And that, you may be sure, was the end of him. But the mother had a very important advice for Jack. Jack, 
What the giant did to your father was bad. But you should not have been so greedy. He reaped what he sowed. But greed is also a bad deed. Jack agreed to his mother and promised to never be greedy again. And they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! That was such an adventurous story. Yeah, Tofu. And do you know why it was my favorite story? No, tell me. The story was about a brave boy who wanted to fight against poverty and in a way he got a chance to take revenge of his father too. But in the process, he forgot that harming the giant again and again was not ethical and stealing from the giant's house was also against his morals. Oh, that's quite a heavy thought for my little brain. <laughs> Let's go. We are late for dinner. Mom must be waiting. Hey Tofu, do you want to come with me? I just saw my piggy bank has enough money to buy new books and toys for the children at the orphanage. You can help me buy and distribute the goodies. You are going to give away all your savings to other children? How can you do that? Don't you want to buy something for yourself? Tofu? We can't always think of ourselves. Sometimes we have to help those who do not have the same means as us. Let me tell you a story of kindness. This is a story from a long, long time ago in Nottingham, England, when Prince Richard ruled the country. His younger brother, Prince John, was a wicked prince who took care of the state while the king was away for wars. Prince John was unkind to common people of Nottingham and had no consideration for the poor. Under his charge, the rich became richer while the poor became poorer. The poor had no saviour to save them other than Robin Hood or the hooded thief as he was popularly known. Robin Hood had a trusted companion called Little John. Robin Hood would rob the rich merchants and the princess caravans that carried the huge taxes collected from the poor as they crossed the Sherwood Forest which was the home of Robin Hood on the way to the princess treasury. and he would distribute the loot amongst the poor. His generosity earned him the name Prince of Thieves amongst the common people and also many rewards that were announced by the sheriff for his capture.
But this did not stop Robin from doing his good deeds. One day, when Robin Hood and his friends had robbed the prince's caravan again, the prince called the sheriff of Nottingham to the palace. This is the last time Robin Hood has humiliated my men and me, sheriff. What are your troops doing? Why haven't they caught that thief as yet? We are doing everything, your highness. I assure you, we will have him soon. You should, otherwise someone else will be punished. The sheriff made a new plan with his men. He decided to announce an archery competition to be held in Nottingham and the winner would be announced as the best archer in Nottingham and also win a kiss from the maiden Marian. One day Robin Hood's friend Tuck came to visit him. Have you heard of the archery competition that the sheriff has announced for tomorrow? Yes, we have, Friar. And the men and I think Robin shouldn't go to it. It is a trap laid by the sheriff. All of England knows that Robin Hood is the best archer by far. Robin doesn't need to go and prove anything there. You worry too much, little John. Lighten up. We will go and have some fun tomorrow. And to ensure that no one recognizes us, we'll wear disguises. And so the next day, Robin Hood and his friends wore disguises and went to the competition. Just as Robin Hood had predicted, no one was able to recognize him. Soon it was Robin Hood's turn to shoot the arrows. He took the first shot at the board and hit Bull's Eye. The crowd cheered for this unknown archer. Then he took another arrow and shot it again. This one too hit Bull's Eye. The crowd cheered louder. The cheering caught the sheriff's attention and he turned to see what the matter was. By now, Robin had drawn his third arrow and took a shot. It too hit the bull's eye. When the fourth arrow also did the same, the sheriff realized something. That is no stranger. That is Robin Hood. No one can shoot four arrows in a row like that. Grab him, men! The whole crowd broke into a frenzy as the sheriff's men arrested Robin Hood. Off with his head! But little John moved like a lightning flash and grabbed the prince and put a knife to his throat. Release him immediately! The sheriff's men had no choice except to let go of Robin Hood. The prince of thieves and his friends hollered and made their way out of the archery field but not before Robin Hood climbed the audience tower and stole a kiss from the maiden Marian. Back 
at the Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood and his friends got together and celebrated. You were right, Robin Hood. Today was a lot of fun. The sheriff had this coming. I am sure you surprised Maiden Marian too. Well, not as surprised as the prince is going to be when he finds out that we stole four bags of gold from his treasury during the sheriff's archery competition. Everybody laughed heartily. Wow, Tia. This is such an inspirational story about being selfless and helping the helpless. I am going to change my ways from now onwards. I am so proud of you, Tofu. That is such a great decision. Keep doing good deeds. Good night, Tofu. Once upon a time, there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house, there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch named Dame Gothel. One day, the woman saw a plant called Rampion, which is used to make salads. Dear husband, I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant. Oh, but that belongs to the wicked witch. Oh, please do something. I really want to eat those Rampions. Okay, dear. I will try to get it for you. At midnight, the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch. And started taking some rampions. The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it. But the very same night, there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong. How dare you, you men! Come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief. You will suffer for it. Oh, please forgive me. My wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her. Oh, if that's the truth, then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants, but only on one condition. What is that condition? You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world. The man in his terror consented to everything. As time passed by, the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. But that very same night, the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl, leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow. You are such a beautiful looking girl. I will name you Raputza and take care of you. <laughs> the witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs but just a small little window. As the time passed by, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks. But her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere. Sad Rapunzel 
just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs. When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day, when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs, a very handsome prince was passing by. He stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. Oh! What a beautiful song! Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh, who are you? Oh Lord, you are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh Prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes, don't worry Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment, when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh, so he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this. The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. 
Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. <laughs> the witch cast a spell on the prince and he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu! Or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu! <sighs> Dia, you? <laughs> what happened? That... That was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. What in the world are you trying to do? I am trying to pluck those juicy fruits from this tree. <laughs> but do you think you will be able to pluck them? They are so high. Oh, I wish I could fly and pluck those fruits. I so wish I had wings. To wish is not bad. But one should be conscious about the consequences. Come, I'll tell you a story. The Tortoise and the Eagle A young tortoise was lazing around the riverbank, looking at the birds flying in the sky. He stared at them and started thinking out aloud. I wish I could fly like those birds. Up high in the sky, I'll watch the beautiful sceneries and beauty of the world from top of the world. Oh, I so wish that. Nearby, an eagle was sitting on a stone, 
listening to what the tortoise was thinking out loud and couldn't resist but ask, Why do you want to fly? You should be happy with what you are gifted with. I wish I could fly with no trouble of crawling on the ground. So say that you want to fly because you don't want to crawl, not because you wish to see the world from the sky. Anyway, what will I get in return for making you fly in the sky? I'll give you the riches of gold from the Red Sea. So the eagle grabbed the tortoise in its claws and soared up high in the sky, making him see all the beautiful sceneries of the world. Flying higher in the clouds and closer to the stars, it was indeed a mesmerizing moment for the tortoise. While the eagle was flying over the riverbank, the rest of the tortoise were basking in the sun. Suddenly, the tortoise flying high up in the sky said, I wish my friends could watch me flying so high in the sky. I am sure they would get jealous watching me. What? Why would you want your friends to get jealous of you? I want them to see that I can fly and they cannot. It's such a nice feeling. What an evil friend this tortoise is, thought the eagle. With this, the eagle dropped him on the ground and asked for his treasure. Now give me my reward. <laughs> there is no reward. I was just kidding about the gold so that you could take me for a ride. And with this, the tortoise left. The eagle couldn't tolerate his insult and decided to teach him a lesson. So the next day, the eagle went to the tortoise and said, Hey, would you like to go for a sky ride again? Yes, sure, I would love to. The eagle once again picked him up and clenched him in his claws. The tortoise, while enjoying the ride, said to the eagle, Why did you bring me again for the ride? even though I dishonoured my promise of rewarding you. That's because, Tortoise, you wish to make your friends jealous, but at my cost. And now I'll let you enjoy the free fall. The eagle let his claws loose and the tortoise went falling down. Screaming for help and flying no longer, he crashed on the ground with a thud. Thanks to his shell, he didn't get injured. Soon, his old friends surrounded him and said, Hey, our young friend, you wanted to see the world from high up in the sky. To dream big is not a sin, but to dream it at the cost of others is just not justifiable. I have learnt my lesson now. I should be thankful to God for what I am blessed with. It was my shell only that saved my life. I should be happy with what I have and also should not use others for my selfish reasons. I surely have learnt my lesson. Tia, now I know what you were trying to say. I learnt a lesson too. One should think about the consequences before one wishes for something. I should be happy with what I am blessed with. I should rather look for an alternative to pluck those fruits. Wait, I'll get a ladder! <laughs> Tofu, you learn things quite fast. Our gardener is so rude. 
I am never going to talk to him again. Maybe you should try to be nicer to him, Tofu. Perhaps he has no friends and feels lonely. Yes, he doesn't talk to anyone. Hence, he has no friends. Why would anyone talk to someone who doesn't talk to them? That's not what Heidi did. Who is Heidi? Heidi There lived a little girl called Heidi. She lived with her aunt in the village. Once it happened that Heidi's aunt had to go to the big city for work. She would be gone for a long time. So she decided to leave Heidi with her grandfather who lived alone on the mountain. Heidi's grandfather, a carpenter named Am, wasn't a friendly person because of some experience in his past. He didn't like to talk to anyone and that is why he lived all the way up in the mountains. And now Heidi had to live with him. Bye bye Heidi. Be a good girl. Bye auntie. Hello. My name is Heidi. Mm -hmm. Heidi waited a while, hoping that her grandfather would talk to her. When she realized he wasn't going to, she decided not to disturb him and instead she went out to see the mountainside. She had never seen such vast lands of green. She fell in love with her new home immediately. She lay down next to a bed of daffodils under the open sky and smiled to herself. That's when she heard the goats with bells around their neck. <laughs> oh, hello. Where did you come from? I brought them here to feed, like I do every day. Where did you come from? Hello, my name is Heidi. I have come here to stay with my grandfather. Hello, Heidi. My name is Peter. Old Grandpa Arm is your grandfather. He often helps us with furniture and maintaining the barn. In turn, my grandmother bakes bread for him. You live here with your grandma, is it? Uh, can I meet her? Yes, come with me. And so Heidi went with her new friend to his house to meet his grandmother. Peter's grandmother was very loving. And although she was blind, she loved to talk and cook. She was very happy when Peter told her about Heidi. Oh, that's wonderful. Come here, dear Heidi. And give me a hug. Are you hungry? Well, come. I will make you some special soup. Heidi spent the rest of the day at Peter's house and learned how to make special soup from his grandmother. Heidi asked her if, like Peter, she too could call her Granny and she was delighted when she agreed. When it was evening, she said goodbye to them and went back to her grandfather's house.
When she reached there, he was still working in his workshop. So Heidi went into the house. Sometime later, Heidi called out to him. Dinner time, Grandfather. Come, let's eat together. Old Arm looked up in surprise. No one had made dinner for him in decades. He closed his workshop for the day, washed up and went to eat. Heidi had made the lovely soup she had learned from Granny. They ate in silence. And although her grandfather liked the soup very much, he didn't say anything. When dinner was done and the kitchen had been cleaned up, they both went out in the yard and sat under the stars quietly. After some time, Heidi started feeling sleepy. And so, she kissed Arm goodnight and went to sleep. Arm had not experienced so much love in many years. And so, he sat there with tears in his eyes for a long time. Next morning, by the time Heidi got up, her grandfather was already in his workshop. She decided to go and be with him. Good morning, grandfather. Hmm. Heidi knew she wouldn't get an answer, so she decided to make herself busy. She swept the workshop, filled fresh water in Arm's jar and to surprise kissed him and went out to feed the hen. When it was about afternoon, she served a lunch of mashed potatoes which she had learnt to make from her aunt. Later she went to Peter's house to spend time with Granny and returned in the evening to serve dinner. This went on for many days. Every morning and night she would kiss her grandfather on the cheek and wish him. She would clean his workshop and fill fresh water in his jar. All this love and care that Heidi gave him changed Arm's behavior. He loved having Heidi around and enjoyed it very much when Peter and Granny came by to visit her. One day, upon Heidi's insistence, he even took her to the village. They bought a pair of shoes for Heidi. On the way back, they bought candy floss. Throughout the trip, Arm laughed and played with Heidi. All the villagers were surprised to see this change in the old carpenter. Two years went by and Heidi and Arm were very happy in each other's company. Till one day, Heidi's aunt returned. She wanted to take Heidi with her to the big city. The man whose office she worked in had a daughter, Clara, who couldn't walk. Clara always needed a wheelchair to go anywhere. Hence, 
she had no friends. Clara's father wanted Heidi to be Clara's friend. Grandfather, tell her I do not wish to go. I want to live here with you. But Arm didn't say anything. He knew that Heidi would have a much better life in the big city. And so Heidi left her grandfather, Peter, Granny and the mountainside to live in the big city. She was straight away taken to the mansion where Clara lived. There she met Clara's father. He was a very kind and loving gentleman who loved Clara very much but often had to travel a lot for business. During these times, he left Clara in the care of her grandmother and a rather stern housekeeper. Hello Heidi, I am Clara's father. I wanted to thank you for coming here. I am sure you will like living here with Clara. If you ever need anything, please let me know. Now come, I will take you to Clara's room. When they entered Clara's room, Heidi saw a beautiful girl, maybe two years elder to Heidi, sitting on a wheelchair. She was very pretty, but she was frail and seemed sad. The housekeeper pushed the wheelchair forward towards Heidi. Clara, this is Heidi. She will live with us now. I will see you both in the evening now. Bye-bye. Saying so, he and Heidi's aunt left to attend their business. For a while, Heidi didn't know what to say to Clara. My friend Peter has many goats. Sometimes I can't make out whether he controls the goats or they control him. Hearing this, Clara also broke into giggles and Heidi immediately knew that they were going to be very good friends. She started spending her whole day with Clara. She would tell her many tales of the mountains while Clara would tell her about the different cities she had stayed in after her mother had passed away. While the housekeeper was very stern and always stopped the girls from enjoying themselves too much, Clara's grandmother was very nice. She even taught Heidi how to read. Everybody who met Clara now noted how happy she looked. One day, the girls went out to the market. As Heidi pushed the wheelchair forward, she saw a vendor selling daffodils. She was immediately reminded of home. Her grandfather, Peter and Granny. When they came back from the market, Clara asked Heidi, Wasn't today fun, Heidi? What do you think of my new bracelet? Uh, yeah, it's lovely. And so it went from that day. Heidi didn't want to play or sing with Clara and she wouldn't read with Clara's grandmother. She wouldn't even eat unless was forced to. She would just keep doing her work quietly. She missed her home terribly and her heart broke 
every time she looked out of the window and saw buildings and towers instead of mountains and sky. This went on till one day she felt terribly ill. Clara's father called the doctor right away. Well, I am afraid she is homesick. She misses home. No medicine or treatment can make her better unless she goes back. I will immediately make arrangements to send her home. True to his word, Clara's father made sure that Heidi was back in the mountain at her grandfather's house in two days. Just the news of going back home had made Heidi feel better. And when she reached her grandfather's home, she ran to him and hugged him. Even Arm was very happy to have Heidi back. I am never going away, Grandfather. You don't have to. Grandfather, this is Clara. She is my friend from the city. She has come to stay with us for a few days. And that is Clara's father. As the two men shook hands, Peter came over. The children were very excited to see each other. You must be Peter. Heidi has told me all about you. You must take me to your granny. Yes, yes. Come, I will push your chair. Granny would love to meet you. After some time, Clara's father said goodbye to everyone. He would come back in few weeks to take Clara back to the city. The children waved him goodbye. In the next few days, the children had a lot of fun. Peter and Heidi would take Clara along with them everywhere. Peter would pluck fresh fruits for them and they even showed her how to milk a cow. With the good food, air, environment of the mountainside, Clara grew stronger. So much that she even learned to walk by herself. Soon it was time for Clara's father to come and take her away. When he came, she surprised him by walking up to his carriage. Oh my darling, I am so happy. As they left, everybody was happy. There was no sadness in anyone's heart. Bye-bye. I will visit you soon. I will too. Goodbye. Take care. So you see Tofu, when you are kind and loving towards someone, you can change their whole life. Yes, dear. Thank you for teaching me this valuable lesson. Perhaps I will take some chocolates for the gardener. Good for others. Tofu, what goes around comes around. If you do good, good will come back to you. And if you do bad, bad will come back to you. What do you mean? 
Let me tell you the story of a little boy called Pinocchio. Pinocchio Once there lived an old carpenter called Geppetto. He had no family and was quite lonely. Since he was quite poor, he would find leftover wooden logs and create something new out of them. One night, he found a large wooden log and took it home. Throughout the night, Geppetto worked on the log. carved a young boy out of it. By the time he was done with it, it was morning. My, my, what a beautiful boy I have made. I wish he had a heart. Then he could be my son and I would call him Pinocchio. A good fairy who knew that Geppetto was a very nice man overheard him and suddenly the wooden boy spoke up. Hello! Geppetto was surprised but overjoyed. He hugged Pinocchio and told him that from that day he was Geppetto's son. Geppetto arranged for Pinocchio to go to school. To buy him his books, he sold off his dear chisel. Now you can go to school like a real boy. One morning, as Pinocchio was going to school, the evil puppet master stopped him. The puppet master wanted to own Pinocchio so he could use him to earn lots of money. Hello Pinocchio. Do you want to go to the fun island? It is a wonderful, magical place where you can become a real boy. Pinocchio was overjoyed at the idea of going to fun island. He quickly started walking with the puppet master. The good fairy who had been watching over Pinocchio suddenly appeared. Seeing her, the evil puppet master ran away, leaving Pinocchio alone. Where are you going, Pinocchio? To school, good fairy. Just as Pinocchio said the lie, his wooden nose grew longer. That isn't the way to the school, Pinocchio. Afraid that he had been caught, the boy decided to lie again. It is a new route. With the second lie, Pinocchio's nose grew even longer. Now he was very sad and started crying. <laughs> I am sorry. I won't go to the fun island. I will go to school. Seeing how sorry Pinocchio was, the good fairy did her magic and turned his nose into its normal size again. Pinocchio thanked her and dashed off to school. Once he reached school, he told all his friends about the fun island. All his friends decided to go and see this magical place. What they didn't know was that the magic in fun island was evil. It turned little boys into donkeys. Oh no! We are in trouble! Everybody, run from here! Just as the boys were figuring a way out of the island, Pinocchio saw Geppetto swimming towards the island. He had been looking out for Pinocchio all day. But to Pinocchio's horror, before Geppetto could reach him, a whale swallowed him up. 
To save his father, Pinocchio also jumped into the sea and went straight into the whale's stomach. There he saw Geppetto. Pinocchio, my son! Father, are you okay? How will we get out of here now? Well, we must tickle the whale from inside till it throws us out. And they started tickling the whale's stomach. Soon the whale sneezed and threw both of them out. Pinocchio helped his father and all his friends to get back to the village. The good fairy had been watching him all this time. Pinocchio, I have seen what a good boy you have been. Jumping into the sea to save your father like that. Hence, I am giving you a heart and making you a real boy. Pinocchio and Geppetto were overjoyed. They hugged each other and thanked the fairy as Pinocchio really turned into a real boy. Do you still think that doing good is a waste of time, Tofu? Oh no, never dear. From now on, I will always do good to others. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.